battle for the vote of the hardworking American manufacturing union worker. And I bring this up today because yesterday President Joe Biden obviously got that big endorsement from the United Auto Workers Union, or at least their president, Sean Fain, who attacked Trump. It's been this way for a long time. Their strong ties together, the Democrats and the unions, can be traced all the way back to Franklin Roosevelt in 1936. Here's Fain yesterday. Donald Trump is a scab. Donald Trump is a billionaire, and that's who he represents. Well, it's widely known that former President Trump has been able to tap into the manufacturing union voter, despite the fact those control the union still largely endorse Democrats. In fact, this phenomenon is recognized in a recent article from The Guardian focusing on Pennsylvania. It states that in, quote, 2016, the connection between Pennsylvania union voters and Democratic support all but evaporated as Trump flipped the normally Democratic state en route to a victory. In fact, the article talks about how a Harvard undergrad traveled all the way to Pennsylvania to study this. Look, I'm from western Pennsylvania, right, where all this happened. I've seen it unfold right before my very eyes, and I have some numbers here to help explain. According to the Economic Policy Institute, from 1998 to 2021, the U.S. lost more than 5 million manufacturing jobs thanks to the growing trade deficit in manufactured goods with China, Japan, Mexico, the European Union, and other countries. This has hit every demographic of people hard, especially the black workers. Black workers lost roughly 650,000 manufacturing jobs between 98 and 2020, a 30% decline in black manufacturing employment. The report also goes on to highlight the fact that there has been a loss of more than 70,000 manufacturing plants roughly over the same period. 70,000, guys, that's factories, everyone, and that is not a typo. And when the manufacturing goes, so do the towns, and this has all happened all across the Rust Belt of America. And after generations of union leadership backing Democrats and overall poor leadership on both political aisles, I'll give them that, in 2016, Trump was the first candidate in a long time to speak and resonate with the people of those forgotten towns. So when union leaders like Sean Fain call Trump a scab, it kind of seems like political rhetoric. Democrats, they've been running manufacturing unions for decades, and their numbers are terrible. And that's why millions of union workers have switched their vote to President Trump. Now, despite all of these facts, Biden obviously still sounds pretty confident. Since I took office, we've attracted billions of dollars in investment here in the United States. We supercharged advanced manufacturing, including electric vehicles made by union workers in America. My bipartisan infrastructure law is building a network of 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations all across America installed by your brothers and sisters in the IABW. Okay, and Katrina joins me over here now to yes. talk a little. You're from Pennsylvania, too. Exactly, and it's just amazing how he is going after these blue-collar workers, but really it's their bosses who are his fans, and the actual blue-collar workers are for Trump through and through. <laughs> so it seems yes. very misguided. Yes, it does. Okay, now the UAW isn't the only union making headlines today and seemingly not in unison. Yeah, interesting. Progressives are urging the nation's largest teachers union to rescind its endorsement of Biden.